When The Muppet Show premiered in 1976, its pilot had been nixed by pretty much every major US network and only found a home on the UK network ITV. Jim Henson, the creator of The Muppets, was frustrated with being pegged as a children's entertainer and wanted something more. By 1978, The Muppet Show was one of the most popular primetime shows in America, had won multiple Emmys, and was described by Time Magazine as, quote, the funniest show on television. One key aspect of the show that separated it from the pack was its meta-satire, taking the viewer behind the scenes of the making of a television show and laughing at the industry, with Time Magazine saying, a gentle but consistent satirical breeze blows through The Muppet Show and saves Jim Henson's creatures from the grisly danger of being too lovable. Through their success on TV, The Muppets began appearing in hit feature films and theme park attractions, all the while maintaining the self-referentiality to the medium in which they're operating. This comes in the form of each media being a story within a story, such as the Disney theme park movie Muppet Vision 3D being about them making a theme park movie. However, the Muppets have struggled with this recently. After a failed TV show and a film with mixed reviews, it was unclear how the Muppets would update to a new era. In summer 2020, Disney Plus released a new Muppet series called Muppets Now, about the Muppets making a streaming show. Muppets Now is following a long line of Muppet media that are self-referential, but the question here is referential to what medium? Social media and streaming have opened up new methods of distribution and storytelling. In particular, a new method emerged called transmedia storytelling. Quote, transmedia storytellers actually build their narratives across these platforms, rolling together video, audio, text, and social engagement into what Harry Jenkins calls a unified and coordinated entertainment experience. Examples include DC Comics using comic books and films, or the web series The Lizzie Bennet Diaries, a modern adaptation of Pride and Prejudice, which streamed vlog-style videos on YouTube and had characters interact with each other and fans on Twitter. The Muppets needed a new and fresh way to engage viewers while also staying true to their meta roots. They are no strangers to operating in multiple media, so transmedia storytelling was the next logical step. There are examples of modern transmedia storytelling that addresses the social media age specifically. However, these are largely independent projects that are either original content or adaptations of classics, such as Pride and Prejudice. With The Muppets, there are two crucial differences. First, it isn't an independent project streaming on YouTube. It is produced by arguably the biggest entertainment juggernaut in the world and is distributed on their official streaming service. Its industrial and distributional practices are grounded in the television industry. This means that these methods of transmedia storytelling and aesthetics introduced by shows like The Lizzie Bennet Diaries are becoming more acceptable to a mainstream context. The other important difference is that unlike these projects, Muppets Now is following a historicity of Muppet content that is meta and self-referential. The identity of the meta-satirist that has been mapped onto the Muppets informs how viewers approach their content, because we know that they'll make jokes about the medium in which they're operating. By staying in these confines of the Muppet brand, Muppets Now is helping to redefine what constitutes television, a vlog, a short-form cooking show, and an interview, all uploaded to a streaming website, constitute television to the Muppets, which means, perhaps, they're becoming television to all of us. Muppets Now, made in a specific industrial and distributional context, employs aesthetics and forms of contemporary media and engages in transmediality, while also remaining grounded in the Muppets' historical meta-spirit. Thus, by asking what are the Muppets Now, the show is also asking what is television now. Although the Muppets had appeared in commercials and late-night shows beforehand, the Muppet Show cemented their identity and brand. Led by Kermit the Frog, the Muppets are a band of misfit performers who come together every week to put on a variety show with a special guest star. Not only were there sketches and performances, but the audience was also privy to the goings-on at the Muppet Theater and what went into making a television show. What are you doing with this typewriter on my table? Kermit, I am writing the script for this week's show. What makes you think the show needs a script? Oh, come on! Every show has a script! This maniacal meta-spirit, the New York Times claims, powered The Muppet Show, a comedy about a faux variety show that was also, itself, one of TV's best variety shows. This show-within-a-show format became The Muppets' trademark. Their first feature film, The Muppet Movie, is framed around The Muppets watching a screening of their own movie that tells the story of how they all met. In The Muppet Christmas Carol, several Muppets acknowledge that they're playing different characters and that this is a movie. This meta-ness and self-referentiality become the core of the Muppet brand and one of their most recognizable features. Despite their success across many different media, it's important to remember that the Muppets were made of, by, and for TV, as the New York Times put it. So, it's interesting that since The Muppet Show, they've struggled to find success on television, with failed shows in both 1996 and 2015. Then came along their saving grace, Disney Plus. 
With the skyrocketing dominance of other streaming services, the entertainment heavyweight entered the streaming landscape with Disney Plus in November 2019. Not only was it a place to access Disney's large library of content, but it was also a forum to find original content. As Chief Creative Officer of Walt Disney Studios, Alan Horn, remarked, Disney Plus gives us the opportunity to make films we would otherwise find challenging in the theatrical marketplace. More risky content could be produced because it wasn't the sole content on the site. Disney could rely on all their classics drawing users in without the fear that unconventional new content might cause a financial loss. Many of Disney's biggest franchises began looking to Disney Plus as a method to engage in transmedia storytelling, such as The Mandalorian and WandaVision. The stage was set. It was time for the Muppets to enter the world of streaming. The Muppet Show was about the making of a variety show. It parodied the variety show, and it was simultaneously the best variety show on TV. Muppets Now is about the making of a transmedia storytelling experience, with Scooter uploading discrete elements to a streaming website. We, however, are viewing them all together in episodic form. Our viewing practices are more in line with the traditional television experience, with episodes being released every week. It is also very much parodying these new age mediums. However, following in the Muppet Show's footsteps, it also means that they are engaging with transmedia storytelling, the very thing they are poking fun at. Not only are they referencing these media, they are these media. Muppets Now is a television show that is made up of vlogs, cooking shows, interviews, and social media. So by referencing and making fun of these contemporary forms of media, it is simultaneously an example of a contemporary form of media. To better understand this, we're going to look at three different examples from the show. To start, let's examine the frame story of Muppets Now. As previously mentioned, the frame of the show is that Scooter is desperately trying to upload different videos to a streaming site by a specific deadline. As with the Muppet Show, there are always shenanigans going on behind the scenes to disrupt the show. The backstage of Muppets Now is Scooter's desktop screen, filled with documents and pop-up text notifications. Different characters FaceTime him to get their two cents in before the videos are uploaded. This frame also allows for a modern iteration of a classic Muppets bit. In episode 3, Getting Testy, Joe from Legal, who is literally a weasel, tells Scooter that they need to screen Muppets Now in front of a focus group, who turn out to be none other than Statler and Waldorf. Statler and Waldorf are two old men who often heckle the Muppets during their performances, and a running bit started on The Muppet Show. In that context, they sat in a box on the side of the audience, watching the performers on the stage. In this digital context, it was much harder to update this bit. By using the frame story making fun of the network focus group, Muppets Now was able to modernize this joke in these characters. By acknowledging that the backstage of a television show has now become a computer desktop and updating classic Muppet bits for that format, the show begins to bring television into the social media age. Another example of an updated sketch from The Muppet Show is The Swedish Chef's Cooking Show. In the original show, The Swedish Chef segment was a parody of instructional cooking shows like The French Chef with Julia Child. He speaks in a mock Swedish, largely gibberish manner, and attempts to teach a recipe to the audience until it all falls apart for comedic effect. In Muppets Now, this segment is adapted and updated for a modern audience. It starts with the same theme music, which helps us to identify that this is a new version of the same beloved sketch. The segment is now hosted by a new character, Beverly Plume, and has the Swedish chef go up against a guest celebrity chef. Just as how the original sketch was a parody of classic cooking shows, this segment is very reminiscent in content and aesthetics to YouTube cooking shows. There are colorful computer graphics, a main host, and multiple cooks. It could very well be a Bon Appetit video, or a BuzzFeed Tasty tutorial. So, we can see that this is a parody of the YouTube cooking video. Yet, at the same time, by using the form and aesthetics of the YouTube cooking show, it brings that form of media to television. Muppets Now is a TV show, so therefore its content, form, and aesthetics become a part of television. Lastly, I want to look at a segment that is totally unique to Muppets Now, Lifestyle with Miss Piggy. This is the only time on the show where a character explicitly states the form of their segment. I started this little vlog as a way to get back to the people you love the most. Everyone! A vlog is defined as a personal website or social media account where a person regularly posts short videos. And the diegesis of Muppets Now lifestyle is by that definition a vlog. It also contains segments that are very similar to the vlog. She gives tips based on a theme of the video, she tries new things, and she answers fan questions with friends. It's also shot in a domestic space, her room, like how many YouTubers shoot their content at home. It's comparable to YouTubers such as Zoella, Tyler Oakley, and to a certain extent even the form of the Lizzie Bennet Diaries. In episode 6, Miss Piggy even has a sponsorship for ridiculous products, like many YouTubers have. By explicitly parodying the vlog form as a segment of the show within the show, Muppets Now is therefore stating that a vlog constitutes a part of TV. In the world of Muppets Now, the story is conveyed through vlogs, YouTube cooking shows, text messages, FaceTimes, and even something as small as a systems update. 
They have a social media intern, and Miss Piggy even talks about posting on her Instagram. I'm going to put this on your Instagram, and now we'll do some stories, yes? And so, we are going to boost my influence, let's not forget right. that! Yes, of course. All right, what's this one called? Oh, yes, um, hashtag, send me makeup! Show within the show is a form of transmedia storytelling. However, these things are all unified in episodic form for the viewer, similar to common television viewing practices. We are not receiving text messages or watching the videos on YouTube, so those features may help us see how the show within Muppets Now is transmedia, but not Muppets Now itself. However, the Muppets have been actively engaging in transmediality in order to promote the show. Kermit the Frog and Miss Picky both have their own social media accounts where they post content and interact with fans, some of which is connected to Muppets Now. Muppets engaging in quote-unquote real life is not a new practice. In writing about the 2015 revival of the Muppets, Alyssa Rosenberg wrote for the Washington Post that quote, the long practice of treating the Muppets as humans suggests that while Jim Henson's creations may be satirizing reality television, they also did a little something to set up the system they're about to parody. She argues that the Muppets, in treating Kermit and Miss Piggy like real performers, helped create this cognitive dissonance in treating the fictional as real. Arguably, this cognitive dissonance that Rosenberg talks about is the basis for the kind of transmedia storytelling that a show like The Lizzie Bennet Diaries employs by having their characters use social media as though they are real people. Muppets Now is therefore engaging in transmedia storytelling, but also playing into a long legacy of treating the Muppets like real people. It is important to remember, however, that Muppets Now is ultimately a television show. It is distributed on a streaming service in weekly installments, viewed in episodic form, and tied to a well-known television franchise. But the essential consequence of my argument that Muppets Now is simultaneously parodying and engaging in new types of transmedia storytelling is that it is being employed by a television show in a specific industrial context. As previously mentioned, Disney Plus is the farthest one could get from being independently produced. Muppets Now is using methods of transmedia storytelling on one of the biggest media platforms in the world. By doing so, it is bringing these methods into the mainstream and helping to say, this can be television. The Muppets are, in my opinion, quintessential television. Muppet iconography is recognizable to people of all generations. The Muppets' history and past informs how we approach their present. You expect that maniacal meta-spirit. They're known for questioning and pushing the limits of media, and by doing so, they've helped us to understand these media. Muppets Now is a television show that utilizes new methods of transmedia storytelling, both within the show and outside it, and by doing so, it is pushing the boundaries of what constitutes television. Understanding what the Muppets are now also helps us to understand what television is right now. As author Lotz writes on changing television practices, television is less defined by how the content gets to us and what we view it on than by the set of experiences and practices we've long associated with the activity of viewing. Muppets Now is reinforcing these experiences and practices associated with television with new formats of content, aesthetics, and form. Television is always changing and transforming, and yet something always stays the same. If the Muppets are adapting to transmedia storytelling with streaming, social media, and even this... It's something in there! Oh, oh my gosh! gosh. What? what? Then so too can television. Like the New York Times said, quote, TV will keep morphing and evolving, but the Muppets, it seems, will always be there for it, end quote. But I think it works in the reverse as well. The Muppets will always be changing and transforming, and they're pulling television along for the ride.